Can they hear me? <laughs> Got it. That's good. Yep, yep. Can you guys hear me? How many people do we have watching right now? Um, I can't see it. Right now we have four. Got it. Can you guys hear me? Okay, there we go. All right, we're good. Am I too loud? Good. Yep, they can hear. Okay, perfect. All right, so welcome to Season 2, guys, Musky Talk. Uh, tonight's guest, Doug Wagner, Doug Wagner Fishing. Um, before we get into that, I just want to bring to your guys' attention this, what I went and did yesterday. Um, DNR Natural Resource Annual Spring Fish and Wildlife Public Hearing. First time I've ever heard about it. I believe I got it off uh, Jeff Rainer Mortal's page. I said, screw it, I'm free. Let's go see what this is. Um, very quick, easy. I believe that people need to get more involved with this. I stayed there for three hours because I had nothing else to do and see what what you know what happens. Um, go there. It's every spring, I believe. Doug, do you know about that? Is it is this an every spring meeting? I can't say I've ever heard of it before, but that, though you say it, it's got to be something good to go to. Okay. Um, it was, I mean, it says annual spring, so I think every spring. Uh, they had, Dude, where was that at? What, which location? This one was at uh, Central High School in the Milwaukee County area. Uh, there was a list for, uh, there was a meeting yesterday, 7 p.m., at some location in every county in the state of Wisconsin. Voting on oh, wow. yeah, voting on changes or revisions to um, laws dealing with the DNR that ranges from trapping, hunting, fishing, uh, hiking, and I believe at towards the end of it, there was actually um, like about hydro hydro geological surveys. Um, so yes. Okay, so Mason says, yes. Yes, very uneducated individuals. I do kind of agree with that because they give a little sample of, ex a little explanation for each question. There's like 50 questions. I feel that they need to give a little bit better example. I know I crossed out my vote a couple times uh, when people started to discuss those questions. So anyways, guys, next spring that's going to happen. I would actually like to get a show for next spring for that dealing with that I think these questions can be a little explained so pay attention get out there vote educate yourself perfect now mr. Doug Wagner how you doing bud I'm good man I just got off the water actually I'm how, great how was it it was awesome I had clients today uh, we're fishing walleyes in Green Bay we had I don't know probably I think we had four fish over 10 pounds today um, okay. with like a 13 pounder that was really special well, yeah, we had, we had an incredible day in the water. My guys were super happy, and they already rebooked for the same day next year. So, Oh, really? They'll be back. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So I know I saw you at the Chicago Expo. Uh, yep. We talked a little bit about your new, your new guiding venture. Um, yeah. You made the big step so we... in doing that, if you want to explain <laughs> that a little bit, and what's it about? What's going on? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's nothing I really planned. Um, I guess the only thing I planned out of it is I was going to guide just people that, you know, wanted to go out fishing, but I was just going to do it part-time. I was going to hold my job uh, working construction, and then just weekends I was going to take guys out, and it's just going to be a way to make some, some money on the side. So I took the class in September, um, got everything passed, blah, 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 and then I was just starting to get my stuff ready for this coming season to start guiding. And then I had received a message on Facebook from a guy who I had actually never talked to previously, um, very well-known guy in the Green Bay area, Brett Alexander. Mm -hmm. And 
Brett somehow had heard through the grapevine that I had got my guiding license and was looking for a full-time guy and wanted to know if I was interested in all. So I set up a meeting with Brett. I drove up to Green Bay and sat down with him at his place. And the numbers up, and it's just an incredible opportunity that I was really you know, lucky to have thrown at me, and I, I couldn't pass on it. So I'm 23 years old, and I'm a full-time fishing guide on Green Bay, I guess. Bam. Just like that. Yeah, like just like that. Like you never, you know, you never know what's coming in life, and that was just a really cool opportunity. It really hasn't set in yet. I've been guiding now for three weeks up here, and I get to meet a bunch of incredible people every day. I get to meet new guys every day, and I'm always fishing different bodies of water. And I've got three different species that we target primarily, and I love it. I, I really love it. I get it's such a different like work atmosphere than construction. Like construction guys don't want to be at work and they're you know they just want to be at home or they want to be hunting or they want to be fishing or with their family and it's just like people are happy to be with me at work like they're not at work it's their day off you know as long as you get the people that have the right attitude which 99 percent of them do Mm -hmm. um there's really no such thing as a bad day on the water i mean fishing can suck but there's so much more to guiding than just you know having your clients catch fish they have to enjoy themselves that's cool. That's a pretty big random step. Like just, oh, Brett Alexander, just, hey, you want to come work for me? Like, <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, like how, how do you even know who I am? Like I'm just, I'm, I mean, hey. I don't look at, there's a lot of, there's a lot of really good fishermen out there and I don't know how I got you know, offered the opportunity, but I would definitely wasn't going to pass on it. Word travels fast when you're a good stick and you just got a guide license. Even, I guess. Yeah. I guess. I mean, I wasn't going to post anything about it for, you know, a while until, you know, I didn't really need to post because I was going to have enough dates full just for the weekends, you know. I, I didn't need to <laughs> put myself out there as, hey, I'm the, I'm the new Green Bay guide. If you want to go fishing, hire me. Like, I didn't need, I didn't need to do that because I already had enough people that wanted to go. Yeah. But then, you know, so I didn't really, I don't even know how Brett really found out. I think it was through Kyle because his, he's got a full-time guy, works for him, Kyle Tkarski. Mm-hmm. incredible fisherman and i talked to kyle like here and there um, and i'd actually asked him about guiding like if he liked it and i was going to see like if it was something i wanted to pursue so he said he liked it whatever and i was like well maybe i'll just go get my license and kind of dabble in it and go from there and it went from zero to 100 real quick <laughs> literally so is this only in the green bay area because i know is that going to be like waukesha too what's uh where primarily so it's gonna be green bay all year round the only time i am leaving green bay is in july all of july i'm going to be spending on lake of the woods um where all my musky videos were shot if you guys haven't seen those you should check them out they're incredible as far as videography my friend ryan does an incredible job yes um but yeah so i'm going to spend all of july guiding on lake of the woods for strictly muskies okay that's kind of that's kind of a weird time in green bay where you know the bass stuff's kind of over with and then like the big walleyes are really hard to find and it's kind of like the eater walleye bite Mm -hmm. and that's just not my style that just doesn't sound fun to me so i was like hey brett what do you think if we offer your clients to come up and you know do a canadian musky trip and he was really cool and was all for it so that's that's where i'm going to be in july but other than that yes i i see myself in green bay at least until mid or end November. And then maybe I'll get crazy. And if some guys want to go to St. Clair, I've got a little bit of experience out there. Okay. Maybe I'll go cast on St. Clair for you know, two, three weeks to end my season before I start ice fishing with Brett. Nice. Uh, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll take the time off. I mean, who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll see. see. We'll play it by ear. Um, mm-hmm. so we got, um, Logan Rass Moosin says, hey, yep. hey Doug. Yep. Um, <laughs> then we got Adam Swicklinski. Uh, he says, who is your video guy, Doug? What's his name? My video guy, his name is Ryan Schiller. Okay. Um, he's a, a friend of mine. I actually met at Lake of the Woods, what would it be, three years ago now? Um, I met, no, two years ago. Two years ago, I met Ryan. And he just got sent up to film me and my friend Forrest. We were shooting a promo for a lodge. Mm-hmm. Um and they hired this kid. This kid came up, and it turns out he lives 40 minutes away from me. So 
I was, you know, I was kind of into the videography world. I used to film for Booker way back in the day. Um, I dabbled in that, and I always like. I have had GoPros since I was like, since like 2010. So since eight, they were eight out. years. Yeah. Yeah, like when they just came out, I started filming my own stuff, and then I got to meet Ryan. He's he's taught me so much about filming and all this stuff. I actually just ordered a, a camera for myself. Uh, a really nice camera. What do you for myself that I'll be get? I'll be getting. I got a Sony A7 S2. Okay, is that a DSLR or a video camera? Yep. Okay. Oh, it's a DLSR. Yep, it's about up the body. I mean, total, I got two lenses, um, a mic, and everything else. It's about five. It's about five thousand dollar investment. Yes, I know those can get incredibly pricey, but <clears throat> you, you need it for oh, what yeah. you do. I mean. Yep. Yep. No, the high quality pictures are something I really enjoy, and then obviously the video stuff when I have days off. I'm just gonna go shoot videos on what I'm what I'm doing, where I'm doing it, and Perfect. keep pushing my YouTube stuff. So Casey Grimm says hi, and Mom says hi. Yeah. So Mother's watching. <laughs> so we'll behave yeah, ourselves. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, great. Like Kyle Vole Voler Voler horrible bad name last names. Sorry guys. Uh, Doug, what do you think of the KBT Revo? So Kramer okay. Brothers. <clears throat> Yep, so that bait actually did very, very well for me this last season. Um, Mike, uh, actually, I didn't even know Mike when I bought the bait. Ryan McMahon pushes them pretty hard. Ryan McMahon is a guide in the Twin Cities, incredible fisherman. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, when they came out, you know, there was a huge craze on them. Everybody thought they were amazing, and so did I. And, I, you know, I picked up a handful of them from Thorn Brothers at the spring sale. Um, and then, yeah, I fished with them last season. If you guys watch the uh oh fred is calling me right now um if you guys watch the videos from day five part one part two and then day six um those fish were all caught in the kbt revo incredible bait um as far as going through weeds and rocks the blade is absolutely incredible um it it always spins like it literally always spins i've never seen a bucktail where the blades spin that well um, and then back in, it would have been September, um, I caught a 53 three quarter on Green Bay on a, on a Revo as well. So I think they're really special baits and, uh, I'll definitely be, be throwing them more and more. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I monkeyed around. I believe, well, I got weak wrists, unfortunately, and probably the wrong reel, but I believe I got the, uh, the 11 and that's just a little too big for me. I need to get is it on. so yeah. I did I did I did best on the 11s you did okay yep so I'll keep that I won't trade it or anything I think I just yeah no I would I would definitely uh I definitely keep that one because I, I did good in my good lake of the woods color was uh it's called black crappie is mm -hmm. the pattern and then the one on uh green bay was black and searchers classic colors um, yep. Yeah, my profile. I think my profile picture on Facebook on my personal page is that fifty-three three quarter. I think yeah, that mondo, that mega. Yep. Yeah. That yeah, that was, an, that was an incredible fish. Uh, so we got some more questions. Uh, not Kyle, Brandon Pickens. How do you feel about the yep. year-round catch and release season on Lake Saint Clair? Um. So that's a very controversial topic. Um, I think. So I kind of, I talked to, there, there's, so here's a little bit of insight on it. When I was over in Michigan for a sports show with Thorn Brothers, it would have been about a month ago now, mm -hmm. the Michigan Muskie Alliance was the booth right next to us. So I went over to those guys and I said, hey, I said, what do you guys think about this St. Clair stuff? And, or, and even, it's the whole state of Michigan. It's not just Lake St. Clair. It's the whole state of Michigan is now year-round. Yep, it's year-round catch and release, or it's, it's, it's year-round um, catch and release, and then they have a keep season. Okay. So there are there's a string of lakes in north in the northwest part of Lower Michigan. So not the UP, but the northwest part of Michigan. Yeah. Um, there there's Torch Lake. Um, there's some other strings of lake. Torch Lake put out like a 54 pounder a few years ago in like July. Cool. Some stupid month. I think I, I like was that was that actually a Great Lake strain? Was that the one that was going yeah. around with the bright red yep. fins? Yep, yep, that's that fish. So that, that chain of lakes has those giant fish in it. Well, the reason those fish get so big is because there's Cisco's in it. They're super deep. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem that Michigan was having is their season typically opens 
on May 15th. Yes. Well, on May 15th, the northern part of Michigan, those fish still haven't spawned. So guys were going up there, and they were snagging fish, and there's only a 50-inch size limit. They were snagging these giant muskies and torch and these other surrounding lakes, and they were killing them. So they wanted to eliminate that, but in order for them to do that, they had to open up the season year-round okay. to make every, everybody kind of happy. But they pushed back the keep season by two weeks. So now you can't keep a muskie in the state of Michigan until the first weekend in uh, June, which let, which lets those fish in those in the in torch in the surrounding lakes spawn without, you know, people can still I guess snag them. You you can't really stop snagging. No, um, you can't. But it's but it but it's illegal for them to keep them. So that is why they did that. And as far as the year-round season on St. Clair, it's kind of. I don't know. It, it doesn't really bother me too much because I don't, I don't think people are going to, you know, it's the same thing. They keep season got pushed back. So if, if people are going to snag them, there's nothing you can do about snagging. People can snag them year round. If they've already been doing it, they're going to keep doing it. Um, but it, that really doesn't affect St. Clair too much. I don't think granted, I understand the guides are unhappy about it. And I would, I would be unhappy about it too. I think it's whatever. I think you should be able to fish it until it freezes up. And then stop there. Um, and then stop there and then have a start date. But as far as if it's going to hurt the fishery, I'm sure it's not going to help, but I don't think it's going to have as big of an impact as everybody thinks. Well, put it that way. if, you know, it was a big enough problem to kind of develop a new rule for a certain area because of people snagging it during spawning, I, I, mm-hmm. I think that some goods are going to come out of it, especially if it's just catch and release. I mean, most musky fishermen are catch and release anyway, so... Mm-hmm. A lot, of, and some sometimes like a year like this, even the fish in the Fox River on Green Bay, some of these fish won't be spawned out by the time our musky opener comes around if if this weather stays like it is. Yeah, so we're going to be catching pre spawn walleyes in Door County once season's open, and people will literally be able to kill walleyes that are full of eggs. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to do that. But again, there's it's no the weather. Like, there's nothing we can really do. I mean, there's just... nothing we can do, and. The DNR can't flip the season just because of a late spring. There's just too much controversy in that. And then you write out tickets. They'd yeah. have to write out tickets, and people didn't read the regs. And it's just a really hard thing to deal with. The, the people just have to take it into their own hands to be, you know, look looking out for the, the fishery themselves and put back those bigger fish. Um, and there's a lot of controversy, too. Like, I had the conversation in the boat with my guys today. Like, oh, like, those big ones don't spawn. Like, they're old. They don't, you know, they don't, they don't lay or don't have as um, high as of a reproduction rate. Like, well, sure, maybe, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe those fish, their eggs aren't as good as, say, you know, your prime spawning size, which is like a 22 to 25 incher. But look at it this way: that that 30 inch fish is carrying two to three times as many eggs. Oh yeah. So I mean, so even if exactly. half of them don't make it, that's still pretty close to a, you know, like a 40 inch fish quantity of eggs. Yep. Yep. And the and the other thing with that too is it's kind of like white-tailed deer where you know those fish have the right genetics exactly. where they're that big. So Something's why right. why why kill them? So just let those fish keep reproducing. You know, we, it's it's turning the the cool thing about the younger generation um, is a lot of a lot of people coming up in the sport of fishing see that it's you know it's more of a catch and release thing and a selective harvest. Yeah. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with people that kill fish or take fish home. I I do it myself. I love to eat fish. Same. I'm not against it by any means, but it's it definitely needs to be a more of a selective harvest thing, and that kind of goes with like the Winnebago stuff where they're trying to cut that limit back to three fish a day. Oh, you should have seen and the even gre- people at the meeting yesterday about that. Oh, and I I don't know. I mean, because that was a voting for me. Question. Out, out, yeah, and I, I hope it passes. I really hope that it gets put down to three. Same. And I. I I guess I wasn't there, but I I really hope that Green Bay gets pushed down to to three because Green Bay is five as well, and there's no slot limit. A guy can come out here and and catch, you know, he can go over to Sturgeon Bay, which will probably still be pre-spawn fish Mm -hmm. once our season opens, and he can kill three or five 30-inch walleyes if he wants. And that's so many eggs. So many eggs. And and you know, the thing that the thing... And that meat tastes like garbage, probably. And... I don't. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I'm sure it doesn't taste as good as your smaller fish. Yeah. Um, the thing that I don't know, like, I don't want to get too controversial, but the thing that kind of bothers me about daily bag limits is you shouldn't 
Each person should not be able to kill more fish than what they can eat in a day or a sitting. You can't eat five 30-inch walleyes in a sitting. Your stomach is not going to be able to handle that. No, that's you shouldn't a lot be of able to just You shouldn't be able to stockpile fish just so you can keep eating fish. Like, that's... But again, I, don't, I like that. I don't, I don't want to get too controversial, but that's just. Oh, come on. I, Controversy is fun. Let's get. I know, less but that doesn't. <laughs> I'm yeah, kidding. We don't have that, to. We can stop. There, that, guy on, that guy on Green Bay is an idiot. No, that's fine. Okay. That, that's fine. We can we all, we all got to stand up. We all, we all to stand up for something. We went into the walleye zone and see what happens. Like, you know, mm-hmm. stuff gets heated in, during the walleye zone. So, all right. Yep. We're bringing it back, people. Um, so we got. Yeah. Logan, we're Rask. talking about muskies, right? <laughs> yeah, now we got muskies. But again, you're guiding for walleyes right now. We still got a uh, well, Green Bay. We still got even longer for Green Bay to open up for muskies. Um, oh yeah. So we got Logan Rasmussen. Uh, we need to book a fishing trip. Message me your dates or times, and would love to set up a time and day to go fishing with you. I'll bring beer, friends. Hashtag friends from back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I went to grade school with Logan. Oh wow. We, uh, so sorry, Logan. I can't. I can't drink any beer while I'm guiding. That's a. That's a big fine. But. Maybe if you know, whatever we'll we'll figure out we'll figure out some days to get together, buddy. <laughs> uh, then we He's got, a good kid. Then we got Chad Lenton. Lenton, hey Doug, any plans in the works for upgrading your Triton? What would your ideal rig be for chasing muskies on Green Bay or Lake of the Woods if you had your choice? Money, no object. Oh God, people already know my boat. Um, oh, I, I yeah. put it all over. I, I put it all over YouTube. That's yeah, come on, man. It, I think it's your freaking cool. your banner on Facebook too. You slinging a big old rubber. It is. Yeah, it is. It is. That's a cool picture. That that's all Ryan. That's, that's not a sick me. picture. That, that's all Ryan. Um, no, uh, I'm actually kind of in the market for a new boat right now. I love my boat. Like, if I wasn't guiding on Green Bay, I would so keep my boat. Um. The only the only problem with my boat is, is that when I'm gonna have to do the fall trolling stuff on Green Bay, once I get in any waves over like two and a half feet of water, yeah, um, I just start nose diving, and then you know my deck's just gonna get wet, my clients are gonna get wet, and that's just no fun. No, that doesn't sound, so, sound too as, fun. So as far as um as, as far as a no object money, um, I really really have liked. I got the fish out of someone's uh, twenty one eighty five recon. Mm-hmm. I really liked that boat, and then obviously a Ranger 621, you know, FS or an older VS would be <clears throat> would be really ideal. So I'm thinking I'm going to look into the Ranger stuff pretty quick here, and uh, I guess since it's my job, no, I should probably get a little bit nicer boat. But it's going to suck to see this boat go because there's been a lot of big fish caught, a lot of memories the last four you years. To, you just sell it to a buddy so you can just keep tabs on it. Yeah, I might I might just try and keep it. That's or what I just should do. Just use, keep use it as my casting boat. Yeah. Just <laughs> smaller smaller lakes casting boat. There you go. Yep, yep, You're... yep. We'll see. Um. All right, back to some, what is this, Michigan's Nicholas Matt Maltby. How do you feel about the new call-in harvesting regulations on Lake St. Clair and slash inland Michigan lakes? So that's a rule I was kind of unaware of. I didn't know that was. So you have to call in your muskie when you harvest it? That, I'm not sure. Nick, you want to explain a little bit, and we'll continue with the questions. Get back to them. Uh, I wonder. Yeah, I wonder if it's like you can only keep one a day, or one a season, or one. Yeah, I'm curious to that's see what fine. that is. If it if it's kind of like deer hunting, that that's fine with me. I like that. Yeah, like I, whatever. If I mean, if it's a tag and you can only take one a year, that's awesome. Deal. Like, that would be. That'd be cool. Really cool. That'd be really cool. Um, I mean, I don't. What a Adam the, the Swig- thing that, oh, the, Go ahead. No, the the thing that gets me about people, you know, if you catch a fish for a lifetime, like I get it. Mm-hmm. If you wanna, if you wanna take that fish's life, I I understand. I hope it's really truly a fish of a lifetime. Um, but what what people can do with replicas these days is just incredible. And honestly, you're best off getting, you know, a replica regardless because just skin mounts lose their color so fast. They're they're so much more susceptible to UV light, mm-hmm. where they'll fade. <laughs> and they'll kind of, you know, shrivel and crack and just replicas just look so much better for the longevity. Now, don't get so me I wrong. Just got I, rep- I do love some old vintage yellowed fishing mounts. Those look so cool. But my, Yeah, like the ones you see in the bars. <laughs> yeah, but my question is if I catch a 54, 55, 56 plus inch muskie, yep. where, where am I putting it? I'm going to keep it. I got to get it probably on the freezer pretty quickly. Uh, 
I don't know where do you take that right away to a taxidermist? What if you're night fishing? Like there's, yep. it seems like yep. a lot of work for a big fish when you could just take some pictures, some dimensions and have someone paint it. Yeah. The, the, and, I, and even here's the other thing too. Like, so if you decide you want to take a fish's life, okay. The only, the only way I see that like being, I wouldn't say acceptable, but like something I would understand maybe yeah. better way to put it is if like that fish just had like, an insanely large belly or was like abnormally thick or had a weird you know, deformity in its body that you wanted it to look exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Then what, then what you should do to help out, you know, other taxidermists and just yourself in general is find a taxidermist that'll make a cast of that fish. So they can take the fish, put it in a mold and make a replica of your fish. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So then, so then you can, and they can, they can do it up to like three times before they lose the detail and the scaling. Okay. So they can, they can put the fish in three different positions and then oh. they have that mold forever. So oh. then, sure. I don't know. I don't know what you would want to do with your fish at that point, but maybe then like one of those your... broken back ones. I mean, those are kind of, yeah. you know, yep. you see a few of those around. Yep. There's, help there's other there's taxidermists. Ex- I see where you're going with that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So then, you know, you can make a cast of that, and then you still get your, like, lifetime paint job as, I mean, as a, as a way to put it. Your, your fish is never going to shrink because it's not a skin mount. Yeah. And then you still have the exact dimension or exact, you know, size of your fish. It's the same fish. It's just casted. Mm-hmm. And then, hopefully down the road, someone else doesn't have to kill their fish. True. Very true. And I don't think it's that much more expensive, is it? It depends on the taxidermist. Honestly, most taxidermists are, are like pretty even with replica versus skin mount. There you go, guys. Bam. Um, next question from Adam Swiglinski. <clears throat> what about the potential for spearing season through the ice on St. Clair? Um, that I just saw that. Seems, the... Oh my god, that just seems awful. Why? Why? Yeah. Like, why? Who, 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 I who wants know. to? I mean. I don't know. I mean, we're in the we're we're obviously in the musky community, but who wants to spear a musky through the ice? Why? I'd like to they catch one through spear, the ice, they, not spear one though. Yeah, like uh, why 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 do people have to kill? <laughs> I... Why here? Here's my thing. Here's my thing. Right. So if you're deer hunting, right, you don't have the opportunity to, like, you know, go tranquilize soft. Yeah, that. Go soft the antlers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you can't tranquilize that deer and say, hey, let me take a picture of it and get a replica of these horns done, and then I'll let it go. Like, if is, that was an option, that'd be the way to go. But can that's the you, beauty though? of fishing is, no, like, you can get a replica of the horns. No, I'm if saying, you, you find your... You can't tranquilize them? You can't... I mean, <laughs> you can, but it's not, I don't think it'd be very effective. Hmm. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but as far as, like, I mean, you're not... If a deer is 300 yards away, you're going to shoot him with a rifle, right? Yeah. And you take and you take that deer's life, and that's fine. I don't have a problem with hunting. I grew up hunting. I still love to hunt. Yeah. But fish, fishing gives the oppor- gives you the opportunity to take the picture with the fish, you know, get the dimensions on it, and then you can let it swim away, and someone else can catch it, or you can catch it later. Like wh- that is the most amazing thing in the world. What other sport can you do that? The, you can't do it hunting at all. I mean, you can... but fishing fishing allows us to do that. That's pretty much the only sport you can. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, so we got spearing season. Yeah, no, that's stupid. Okay, just stop that. Yeah, um, sure, <laughs> sure. We'll, we'll go with that answer. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Pat Kime. Hey, Doug, do you think Colin will help me catch a muskie one day? Probably not because I don't catch fish, so call Doug. That'd be the easiest, best <laughs> way to do that. Uh, once hey, meeting. hey, we, we, we don't always catch them every day. There's days where we all struggle. I don't catch giants every day. I go home skunked. There's days I don't see fish. Yeah, but I, I I bet you I have you beat on more skunk days. I bet you I do. I'm a better skunker than you. Know, I try some really weird stuff some days. Maybe, maybe. I, I don't know for sure, but I'm just saying I, I try some weird stuff, and there's a lot of days where I don't see any fish. Um. So we got... What else we got... All good apple juice. Fine. Um, and from Logan again. Hey, when you made that video where he uh, screamed trifecta, how many fish did you actually catch that day on video? Trifecta. 
Hmm. Um, I don't remember yelling trifecta. I think I've watched all the footage a million times over. Um, there was a day, let me think. There's a few days or a few videos. Day five, part one has three catches. Um, and I caught all three of those fish. Day, day, no, not day six. Day eight, we catch three fish. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm guessing it was day five, part one. Um, what was the question again? What did I yell? Uh, he said, how many fish did you actually catch that day when you yelled? Trifecta. Oh, um, so, okay, so I, the day I'm thinking he's talking about is day five, part one. That day we caught five and hooked six, so we lost wow. one fish. Wow, that's a great day. Forest lost a fish. Mm-hmm. No, then that's the beauty of Lake of the Woods is there's a, there's a lot of fish there. Like I, Forrest, the guy that I fished with or the guy I did that series with, um, we've had seven fish days, but Forrest has had a 12 fish day. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah. That's yep. just nasty. Yep. <clears throat> with, with like all but all but two of them are over 40. I think. There's only like two 30 inch or 30 some inches in there. A lot of them were really nice. Like 42 is the I think 49 was the biggest fish in the day. That sounds Forrest so is incredible on Lake of the Woods. Yeah, he's Man. incredible. Man. Uh, so you're going to start guiding for muskies when they open. Uh, I know I talked to you personally about also guiding for smallmouth. So those are the three main mm-hmm. fish you're going to be guiding for this year uh, in the Green Bay area. Um, yep. Going into Green Bay this year with the weather we have thus far, tactics, or you think they're still going to be a little behind in the spawn? Um, normal stuff, small spinners on the shallows, or what do you plan to do if these are going to be pre-spawn fish in like Green Bay for Northern Opener? So pre pre-spawn fish are they're so much harder to catch. They really are. Um, I know. God, I've only caught a handful of them. I think my biggest pre-spawn fish is forty-seven, mm-hmm. and that fish that fish ate a double eight after dark. Um, out of Green Bay, that was a really cool fish. That was opening night. Um, well, I fished all day, but then it was the night of opening day. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think I think Green Bay, as far as the if the weather kind of rolls out from where we have it right now, it's definitely going to be a, a spring where there's a lot of fish in the Fox River, mm-hmm. and things are going to things are going to be behind a little bit. And uh, yeah, as far as baits, I mean, the Fox is really known for you know single single bucktails, double bucktails. Um, I bought some Apaches this year, some small eight Apaches that I'm interested to try Okay. out there, sm- small Revos maybe. Um, but topwater too, topwater is incredible in the spring in Green Bay. It really is. No. Spinnerbaits do. I, Spinners, don't, okay. People need, people need to remember like, spinnerbaits can be killer. I caught, a really, I caught a really nice fish last year on a spinnerbait. And they like, really? exist, like there are musky spinnerbaits, because I keep forgetting that there are musky spinnerbaits. It's not just for bass. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, and they are a completely different vibration than a bucktail. So you're going into the spring, starting off with muskies. They're an opener, probably. Um, and you said you have a little bit of a lull in July, heading up to Lake of the Woods. Yep. Coming back down here, muskies again. What, what are you fishing in Lake of the Woods? That sounds, it's so foreign to me. I'm not used to that style of fishing. What do you mean by? Like, what are you, what are you fishing? What kind of structure? What kind of baits are you using? Mm-hmm. I don't think I've had many people on here from Minnesota who talked about Lake of the Woods. And that it is such a premier destination. And I know that it is so big. But are there some kind of like, hey, put this in your tackle box for Lake of the Woods. Right? Are any, any sorts of those baits? Oh, yeah. Um, definitely. I think uh, a, fat, a fat bastard, which a lot of people have, mm-hmm. is incredible. Uh, we've got so our video that comes out week from today is the top water strike that we that you guys see in the in the trailer. Okay. So that fish comes that fish comes out on day eight, and that that bait does forest very well up there. Um, a cannibal junior was pretty good for me up there as well. As far as go to baits up there, if it's really really tough, um, I like I like big middle baits like a eight inch grandma or a nine inch magnum shallow raider. Are really good baits for me, and then also um, double nines are incredible. And then you got to have, like I say, a, just a, a top a tail bait, it's like a like a fat bastard top water, mm-hmm. like those three baits. If you take a double nine in black and green, you take a top water that's black, 
and you take a minnow bait that is blue and silver or like a sucker color, like a brown and white mm-hmm. um, or a perch pattern, it's 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 really good. Those are your top three to go, you know, yep. on the casting deck or on the yep. rods. Yep, you need a big minnow bait, you need a top water bait, and you need a you need double nines. And so let's say that, hey Doug, I'm, you want to guide me up there when you're in July? What? Because it's in, you're on the Can Canadian side, correct? So I'm on the Minnesota side. Okay. So I'm in the Minnesota side, but the border is a mile in front of where I'm staying. So mm-hmm. every day I'll take my guys into Canada. So going, what what would I need to do in order for me to fish Lake of the Woods with you in Minnesota and Canada? So you're going to need a passport because you're going to, in order to get to me, you're going to need to get into Canada. Okay. You have to get you have to get into Manitoba, and then you have to get back into Minnesota. It's the Northwest Angle. It's a really weird piece of land that the U.S. owns. It was oh, actually that a little, mistake. That tiny little piece, the most northern piece yep. of the United States. Yep. So that's that, okay. that's where my truck and trailer will be, and then uh, yeah, so you have to get into Canada and then back into Minnesota. So you got to have a passport, and then just if you want to fish, just shoot me a message. I've got a lot of dates full already, but I think I've got about ten open days. Okay. All right. So that's what you need, guys, if you want to go fish. Man, that's tempting. That's really tempting. Yeah, it's it's incredible. I mean, it's kind of it gets expensive due to, you know, you, you're getting a guide every day. Yeah. So there's that, and then uh, you have your lodging. So, But it can be, if you want to learn how to fish it, that, like, hiring a guide cuts down your learning curve by oh, literally yeah. years. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Years. Definitely. It saves you. It costs money, but at the same time, it saves you so much money. In the long run, yes, yes. What? How long does it take to get a passport? Now, this is just a personal question because I kind of want to get one. Uh, I think it depends how busy they are, but generally, I think it's like three months. Oh, that ain't too bad. That ain't too bad. It isn't. It isn't because all of a sudden it's like, oh man, I should really get my passport. Um. So we got. Where'd that one go? Brandon Pickens. What baits slash live baits, and where do you fish in December on Lake St. Clair? So when I have fished Lake St. Clair, it's been in Anchor Bay, which is in the northwest side. And then uh, all we threw, or all we caught fish on were medusas. Okay. Medusas are by far my favorite rubber bait. Um, I just started to get into the rubber game a couple years ago myself, and medusas are incredible. I freaking love them. I've, I can honestly have never caught a muskie and a bulldog, but really? I've caught a lot of fish on medusas. Yeah, I've caught a lot of fish on medusas. Interesting. Yep. yep. Um, That'll change. That'll the, yeah. the bulldog thing will change. I still have a I have more bulldogs I think than I do medusas. I just don't catch any fish on them. <laughs> Trey, I'm trained. Typical so musk. Tip, typical musky fisherman problem. Of I have course. too many baits I don't use. Too many. Did you have to like go? All right. So this is a gear topic question mm-hmm. what, what what rods are you using for because um, I know you kind of have to have a little bit of everything when you're guiding because you kind of don't know who your clients are going to be and what not really disabilities but maybe overcome challenges maybe it's mm-hmm. you know so what kind of setups are you having that you're covered with you know a regular fit young gun or, you know, maybe an older gentleman or even older a woman, maybe a little kid. What kind of different setups are you running on your boat for all ages, walks of life, that kind of stuff? For for, for musky setups? Yeah, for muskies. Yep. So I'd start with, like, a 8-foot medium heavy. Um, I, myself, don't like to throw a rod under 9-foot anymore, mm-hmm. regardless of what I'm throwing. Even glide baits, I just throw a 9-footer with, just switch it to the side. Yeah. Um, the long the long rods are, are so incredible, and the new the new ten footers that Saint Croix came out with are really awesome. I'm really excited to get some of those, but I'm I'm gonna start my clients out with a eight six medium heavy, um, and then go up from there. If you know, I'll I'll put them with the longest rod they feel comfortable with. Okay, so you kind of start I, that. I sell out. I, yep yep. I mean, I sell a ton of rods for Saint for uh, Thorn Brothers in the winter at all the sports shows. Yeah. And the first thing I ask people, you know, what do you want to spend and how long and what's the longest you think you're comfortable with? And then I just start putting different rods in their hands. 
And the longer the longest rod I can sell them, the better. The more happy they'll be with it in the future, 99% of the time. All right, so I'm looking for a rod. Now this is back to me, personal question. So in case you didn't know, this is why I made this show, so I can talk to fish catching machines like yourself, personal questions. <laughs> and you're like kind of oh, like, no. that's why, yes. Um, so no, I'm, I'm not, run... a fi- not a fish catching machine, okay. just like to fish. Uh, someone who catches a decent amount of fish and now is just a professional guide full time. No big deal, just making a living <laughs> off catching fish. I think that qualifies as fish catching machine. So I'd ah. like a rod for smaller baits, um, such as like, like MUPS, MEPS, musky killers, even some mm-hmm. um, larger bass size, not really bass size, but um, uh, thunder sticks, stuff like that. Very smaller, finesse French blades, small twitch baits. What kind of action am I looking for in a rod? And what? You're, you're, you're going to want a fast action. Okay. Um, so fast action is going to give you some, some whip in your tip. Okay. Uh, which 90% of the musky rods are fast action, unless you get into the rubber stuff. Okay. Um, and the, the long, so the longer the rod, the further you can cast light baits. Yeah, I have no problem with, with like the, a, a nine. Next thing. With like a nine foot. What I'm kind of more concerned about is some of the rods I've been looking at. It's like, um, I forgot what what action, but it's like good for lures one ounce to ten ounces, and I'm like, okay, that's that's a wide variety of. Like I don't want that. Is that like a moderate? I, Is that a moderate? I, I have no idea. But there are very precise rods for certain sizes of lures. Or maybe, certain sort maybe, of maybe, maybe maybe even want to look at like a heavy, a really heavy bass rod. You think? If you're gonna throw like thunder sticks, like thunder sticks are really really small. Yeah, you know the um, the bigger thunder sticks, not the musky size, but you know six. How, six how long are they? Six inches? Yeah. So, I don't know, that's, then, I'd, then I'd probably push. So if you want the ultimate small bait musky rod, right? Yeah. Um, so what I throw all my single, like my single sevens, all yes. my lightest musky baits, I yes. throw on a nine-foot uh, Legend Elite St. Croix. Okay. It's a medium-heavy, fast action. Okay. And I can I can take a single-bladed, um, like a, a buck, like a legit bucktail, not a tinsel tail, but a bucktail. Mm-hmm. You know, a bucktail has more drag when it's getting thrown through the air it's not as slick as tinsel Mm -hmm. i can throw that just about i mean 60 yards 50 yards okay like you can if you as as long as you have the right reel um to match your rod that rod is really incredible for throwing light baits all right now now how much does that rod run how much is that that rod is five that rod's 550 okay so problem sell me a rod in like 200 are there are they out there I'm sure they're out there. The problem with that is I've been I've thrown St. Croix since the day I was born. <laughs> and oh, I've no. been lucky enough to work yeah. and I've been lucky enough to work with them the last six years. The the other one that comes to mind, um, it's not quite where you want as far as price point. I think it's like three forty. Mm-hmm. But it's a it's a legend tournament. It's a, called a long ranger. It's an eight foot six, medium heavy fast. Okay. That is the other rod that comes to mind. Otherwise if you really want to get, you know, really technical Granted, this isn't going to hit your price range either, but Thorne makes custom rods where okay. you can they'll make basically anything you want. Okay. But as far as in the two hundred as far as in the two hundred dollar range, I I can't say I really know. But St. Croix kind of pitters out their medium heavies at like the eight foot mark in the premieres, which is around that two hundred dollar mark. Okay. I so maybe, I, maybe I, again, maybe you want to go to a happy bass rod. Okay, I'm going to have to check those rods out, and I know some of the guests, uh, the viewers told me some stuff that I need to go check out. That was, that was, that was for me guys. Sorry. I want to get my question in there now. Um, so what's, what's your plan opening day, green Bay muskies. Are you going? Fox? I, think, I think I have a, I think I have a bass fishing trip. <laughs> really? Oh my God. Oh Lord. I know I do. I know Monday through Friday I do. I don't know about Saturday, Sunday for sure, but Monday through Friday I have a bass. I have bass trips every day. Maybe this huge corporate group. Huh? Like what? What a buzzkill! Are like no. it's going to be such? It's, it's going to be such an incredible spring, and I have to go bass fishing. Like I, I love smallmouth. Don't get me wrong, but and giant oh, smallmouth. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Giant, giant smallmouth. It's going to be a great year for giant smallmouth because they're going to hold their eggs for so long. 
Yeah. I need I need a, I need a seven pounder in my life, and this might be the year to do it. That this is the time, man. This year could be the one. That's could be the one. Possible, very possible. I, oh, I caught a walleye today that was like thirteen pounds. Oh, no big deal. Just thirteen pound walleye. But that's stupid big. That's what that's what Green Bay's about. Just monsters, monsters. It is. It is. It, it's intimidating. Um, it's a very large body of water, and there's a lot of floating ice out here right now. Like. Yeah, if you come out here, you need to know what you're doing, and you need to have a little background of the water that you're fishing. Okay. Um, but in future, if people want to come, or even, you know, I had a kid who messaged me on Instagram what, two days ago. 23-year-old kid messaged me on Instagram. He's like, hey, I saw your post. Are you are you free to guide tonight? It's like, sure. And six hours later, I had him in the boat, and he went out, and we caught, like, 25 walleyes after dark. That's sweet. He had a 28-and-a-half-incher. That's, that's pretty cool. Spur of the moment. I'm really... Yeah, like I'm really easy to get a hold of. Just shoot me a message, and if I can get somebody out, I'll definitely get them out. So I have your your link up here for Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Doug Wagner's Fishing. I take it those are the main contact points for yourself? Yep, those are the best way to get a hold of me, for sure. Cool. Now, Now, what are we we expecting on the YouTube page for this season? Because I believe this is your first full season as a guide, correct? Yes, yes. So the beauty of this season is going to be I'm on the water every day, right? Mm-hmm. I'm, it, it, it's going to be so much like, – it's so, it's so much easier to guide every day and catch fish versus, you know, being a weekend warrior because I get to see what the fish are doing every day and I follow what they're doing. It's not – it doesn't – I don't go up on a weekend. It takes me a day to figure out what they're doing, and then I have a day of good fishing, and then I have to leave again for five days. Yeah. So whenever I have days off, um, that's why I bought this, you know, made the investment in that $5,000 camera. Mm-hmm. Whenever I have days off, I'm going to film. Um, I shot a show while I was fishing like a week ago. I got to edit that up and get that out. But I'm hoping to pump out a video. I mean, it depends how many days I have off, honestly. But there's there's definitely more YouTube stuff to come, and it's going to be all on my own. Uh, Brian's Brian's got his own stuff going on. He's a very busy person because he does incredible work. Um, but I'm going to, he's going to come with me when he can, we are going to shoot another week on the woods next year that will be coming. Cool. Um, Excited there's going to be one. five days. No, it'll be, it'll be five days, not 10, but, uh, he will be back in the boat and we're going to get some fish. It'll be really fun. But yeah, as far as my YouTube stuff, I'm really excited about it. And I'm obviously spending $5,000 to pursue it even more. Cause I, I, I remember learning about it and I'm like, he needs to upload more videos. There's, there needs to be more videos. Oh, yeah. There's not enough Doug Wagner videos. What What's going on here? And then I saw you post, you know, Week at the Woods. I'm like, okay, here it comes. And then I found out your guide, and I'm like, okay, there's some stuff in the works. He lives, he's a busy guy. Wait for it. So this is the year. This is the year for this, it. This might, yeah, this might be the year. And YouTube's coming on so strong. But it, at the same time, it's such a saturated industry now because people see that they can make money on it, and everybody's trying to do it. But whatever. In, in, I'm going to do, do my own thing. I mean, while you're out there, throw a camera up there. I yeah, mean, if, if my clients are cool, if my clients are cool with it, that's the biggest thing. They just have to be, you know, my clients come first when I'm guiding. Yeah. Um, I, I got to make sure they're happy. But if they're cool with it, heck yeah, I'd love to film them. Like today, I wish I had cameras in the boat because we caught freaking giants. Damn. It's a really, really special fish today. Man, that sounds way better than my day. So, kind of jealous. Very jealous. Yeah, I had yeah. off today. I could have drove up there. Fish from you should have. Well, oh. I had an eight-hour trip, but whatever. Maybe one of these days. Maybe. Like I said, I'm easy, I'm easy, I'm easy to get a hold of. Yes. Very easy to get a hold of. Very easy. He's so. Um. For your guiding career now. Mm-hmm. You going to be in Green Bay the rest of your life? I know this is your first year. Do you plan? Where do you see that going? Oh man, I mean, as of right now, I don't see a reason to leave Green Bay. It, it's it's one of the world's top fisheries, and I don't I don't understand why. I mean, I get it's like family tradition and stuff, but I don't get why a lot of people drive right by it to go to northern Wisconsin to fish walleyes or smallmouth or muskies because the bay is right here. And if you take the time to learn it, it's one of the premier fisheries in the world. We have we have world class smallmouth fishing, world class muskies, world class walleyes. It's a really hard place to be. It is, but it also is a big body of water, and you, it takes some time to learn it. 
it takes a lot of time to learn it. A lot of time. So, so if you could give, I know me and a couple of my buddies dabbled with Green Bay with walleyes and with muskies, and we feel like we want to, you know, get, get a little bit more involved with the Green Bay. What, what are some tips for people trying to learn that body of water that can maybe make it a little easier, maybe a little faster, maybe more productive? What are, what are some tips on learning that body of water? They, I mean, I don't, I don't need, I don't mean to sit here and promote myself, but honestly, a guide cuts down a lot of time. Yeah. Okay. It, it's just, it, that's just, that's just the way it is. Other than that, there's a lot of literature on, uh, on this lake. Um, you mean there's a lot of articles you can read and stuff you can do to look into the lake itself. Um, and you know, there, there's a lot of information out there. You just have to be willing to try, go out and look at it. Okay. And then for kind of, kind of like my last, well, I got two last questions. So my final official real last question is, are you going to be traveling up? Cause I know that the tributaries, you know, go up like, okay, it's thawing here, but maybe, I don't know. What is the top river, the Menominee? That might still have ice on it. Are you traveling with the bite as it goes, or are you just Green Bay, Fox River? Yeah, I mean, the Fox River is going to have so many fish in it this year. Like, the amount of fish that I'm seeing when I when I troll, uh, when I troll walleyes at night, I like, guess it's not uncommon for me to see at least a dozen muskies. Okay. I'll put up, you know, I put up a, I mean, I, when I see a really good picture of one, I'll put it up, like, on my Instagram story for yeah. people to see. Yeah, I saw, I've been watching those. I'm like, ooh, there's, well, there's one right there. So you don't yeah, plan on, no, you know, following, like, the spring bite northward or the, the fall bite southward? Okay, yeah. No, I don't think so. I mean, the, the Fox River is going to be so good that it's going to be really hard to leave that. And then, okay. The, the, the surrounding waters, they're just, they're so much harder to fish than the fox. Fair enough. And I'll probably be doing a lot of bass fishing. So. Hey, that ain't too bad. That ain't too bad. So the final question, which is kind of the funny question is, Doug, can you tell me your funniest boat launch story? Oh, uh, funniest boat launch story. Um, That's a tough one. I don't... I'm it could sure... have happened to you. You could have saw someone do it. Your friend messed up at the boat launch. Oh, I'm sure I've done it. Um, oh, I flooded the back of my boat once. I didn't take the straps off, oh. and I put a I put a good amount of water in the bottom of my boat. <laughs> Were you by hey, yourself? We've all done it, right? Yeah, I think so. As long I as think it, so. So what? What? I was in a rush. Yeah, yeah. That's the way it goes. Of course. Yep. Yep. Well, Doug, thanks for coming on, man. Um, yeah. I'm going to be in touch about that possible guide trip with me and my buddies. Um, Best way to contact you, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, at Doug Wagner Fishing. Check him out, guys. Check out his videos and everything. I believe you have a website, correct? I do not have a website, actually. I should probably have someone make a website. Okay. It's pretty easy to do these days, isn't it? Probably, yeah. <laughs> so contact him if you're interested in guiding for prices and details. Other than that, uh, thanks for coming on, Doug. Really enjoyed the talk. Yeah, not a problem. I'd love to be back on again. Uh, we will catch back up later in the season and see how that goes so sounds good man have a good season if, uh, hopefully i see you oh hopefully you I will see you up here you will <laughs> have sure. a good one doug all right have a good one bye there it is doug wagner cool 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 got to talk with him multiple times at the sports shows very cool cool guy um and then just, i'm guiding full time for brett alexander bam just like that I'm like, oh, that's cool. So check them out. Like I said, those those links. Other than that, thanks for tuning in. Season 2, Episode 1, Musky Talk, as you see Tuesday, because it's not probably going to be for Mondays, because uh, my days off are very random. I'm working morning, afternoons, nights. I'm going to not give you guys just a 12-hour notice of when I'm going live. I will work on that. Also, got a new logo coming for this. Might make a new Facebook page just for this. Yes, that is a bed sheet in my background. Uh, there is a fancier, uh, you know, one coming besides my bed sheet. I know Jeff Woodman from Tro says it's official. I'm official now, guys. I got a background. So I'm going to upgrade that to an official, official background. Other than that, Comments, questions, inbox me. Uh, guests you want to see. 
questions you have. I tried to go on YouTube, but I was having problems with that. I want to go on YouTube because the freaking quality is better. But I don't know. We'll see. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And I will see you next week with someone. Uh, here we go. We're going to drop it. Everything slime in prime time, baby. We're going to use it after every show. Talk to you guys later.